Welcome to the Queensland Racing Preview. I'm your host, Nick Heathcote, and I'm joined by Shane Cherlio, who moonlights as MJ, and he's finally got a little bit of merch hanging over the Winx print, and he's got uh, the holy one, the great man, Michael Jordan, to get himself in the zone and betting. Mate, you look like a new man with the yep. buzz cut. Yep. Um, had a real deep, dark search into the soul after Saturday night at Toowoomba. Might change my handle from Toowoomba Tips to anything but. Um, so I thought I'd have a fresh... I, have a, I was going to just shave my beard. I got this number three blade. I was going to have a little shave of the beard just to trim it up a little. And um, I thought, and I started shaving the side of my head as well. And I thought, oh, I'll just take it all off. My wife's a hairdresser and she didn't have a number three blade. She only had a number four. So you can probably see there. I thought I'd gone a little bit shorter. Mm-hmm. Around the years I, there. I thought you were trying to get a lightning strike in the in the side of your head like all oh. the kids do. I'll do that. Yeah, that'll come up. I'll see a few footy players run that sort of fade, don't they, nowadays? A few of the AFL mm. players. I reckon the, um, the, haircut, the haircut and shave's probably not 10 years off your life. You look fresh, man. Yeah, that's, I'm glad because it, it's, look, the weekend's betting put 10 years on my life. So I'm, I'm split, <laughs> split up and I'm ready to go again. Ready to go. Now, uh, the race of this weekend are uh, at Royal Ipswich. Uh, it's notoriously a leader's track. You have to be a pretty good horse or come off a, a slow run race and run over the top of bad horses to win from behind there. Um, it's a meeting that I've usually liked over the past few years with some, you know, some stronger Sydney horses or Melbourne horses coming up. But obviously, with COVID, it's, it's not, not quite the case. And it's a little bit of the same horses running around against each other. But... On a more leader track, is that the way you sort of see the see the meeting? Yes, um, obviously there won't be eighty thousand people there this this week like there normally is at this track. This is one of the biggest meetings in, in Queensland for, for festivities. Um, you know, the standard sort of black suit with white shoes and white belt and white sunnies get a real good run at this meeting. <laughs> You know, the, the, in, the infield is just full of people, and it's always a bit mad. But um, you know, this is this this meeting will be about the horses and um, it does lack a little bit of flair um, this meeting this year, unfortunately, because as these horses are going around, a bit of a ho-hum sort of affair and, you know, there's sort of black type on offer, if you like, for a, a few horses, um, whatever that means to the pages of the breeding buffs. But, um, yeah, look, it's one of those things, which is if it, if it stays uh, fine, it will be, um, you know, on a good track, the you know, horses that find the front will definitely be able to have an advantage kicking off that corner in that short straight. Yeah, the weather look, report looks really, really good up in uh, Queensland. And with the true, I think it will play pretty well. Let's look at the race seven, the eye liner. Boom Zara's opened up favourite at 440. Mr. Bellagio, 480. $6 deep image. Panino, 650. Bandaper, $10. Tarzan, 17 and longer the rest, I would have thought um, there's enough genuine speed up here, up up in front with Tarzan, uh, up in front for Barry One. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, a, it's a messy speed map up front. Um, there's a number of horses that will be forward, I suppose. You've got Tarzan, Mashani Hustler, Fiery Heights, Boom Sara, Monsieur Gustave, depending on which version of him turns up. Deep Image is another one who's, you know, takes a normally takes a couple of strides to sort of hit straps and get going and moving forward. So nice a bit of speed there, uh, definitely. Um, it should be fireworks early. Boom Sarah come up favourite, you mentioned. Um, interesting. I thought it was disappointing. That I thought it raced, I, initially watching the race, um, what do they call that race down at Grafton there, the Ramoni? Initially watching... Yep. I thought the horse raced okay, you know, considering it was first up 1,200. It was, you know, I had the one trial, it led. And when I look at the sectional data on punting form, it's pretty disappointing, I thought, really. Um, Probably entitled to finish off a little bit better. Um, So there was sort of no money for it late either. It it did sort of drift a bit late. It was, I think there was a tiny bit, I think there was money for it early. And then it was like 13s to 21s. Um, You know, there was a fluck raced on speed and got ran over comfortably in the end. Um, 
Yeah, I think this is more about the speed map and how the track's playing throughout the day, uh, more so than trying to find a, you know, a distinctive sort of bet early for me on this one. I've gone through the field and I don't know sort of what to make of it. I thought of, on its best, a horse like Deep Image would be sort of really hard to beat, but from the gate, it's going to have to do a pair of work. I'm not sure, you know, whether it's going to be able to do that for me out there and still win. So a little bit up in the air on this race is... Uh, Plenty of angles. Um, you know, we spoke about it being a leader's track and then you look at a horse like Penino, um, who's going to get back a little bit and going to need some luck. Um, you know, and if he does get it, he can definitely, he's a definitely leading chance or she's a def- definitely a leading chance in this race. Mm, I thought um, even a horse like um, Bandipur, like a horse that's going to be strong late would even surprise here. And I think, yeah, it's... The early, early um, part of the race will tell the tale here and it might even be for the, the bet fair and players um, once, once sort of the field position is established early in the race, you might be able to um, tune into the right sort of horse then. But, yeah, it's not the traditional eyeliner by any stretch of the imagination. But, yeah, I can see why you like Deep Image. Um, and I guess, yeah, Brad Stewart's the, the obvious form rider up there and, yeah, really is a disappointing Eyeliner and looking across the card, it's yeah, it's, it's just disappointing all around, which is uh, it's a bit of a shame because yeah, I used to love, I love the love the card there, the Gay Waterhouse Classic, uh, Jamie Jamie Lady three sixty, Multaja five dollars, Solar Star nine fifty, Shawa twelve, River Racer thirteen, Twitchy Frank twelve, Jamaican Rain fifteen, Amasita seventeen, uh, Skate to Paris eighteen dollars. Uh, Persuader, a horse that I've found before, $26, and Strome, $26. Troy, we are leaning here, and what, what were your thoughts here? Oh, um, pretty similar to the to that uh, to the discussion of race seven, really. I thought the speed map was the first thing I worked on when the fields came out. Um, you know, you got a horse like Jamie Lady who led and... Um, I suppose it's fair that you could probably say dictate a little bit last time. Um, I certainly didn't go. I still went minus two, I suppose, to the 600 um, in that race, but it was sustained effort from it. Uh, you know, I don't know about the 1300, I suppose, or the 1350. Sort of take into consideration here the track. It's a little bit tighter turning track, a little bit more favourish to leaders. So if it does lead, it's, you know, is it a genuine 13? It's a 13.50 metres around a leaders track as opposed to, say, a 13.50 at, at uh, Eagle Farm, for example. Uh, more mm. time, a bigger straight, more time for the back markers to work into it and then, you know, hit top gear. Um, you know, this horse has had, had one go at the 13, at a 1,300. At, it was like a length and three quarters off um, Invincibella in Erythea in the Gold Coast. Phillies and Mares, a million-dollar race, Magic Million. So... You know, it's got the right sort of form. Um, obviously, that little bit of question mark just based on how much pressure it's going to cop. Um, looks the leader originally, and then I sort of looking at horses like Shelwa and Jamaican Rain from wider gates who don't have an option. They have to go forward. Um, you know, do, can Jamie Lady sit off them third and just, you know, get the gun run? It you know, possibly could. Um, if that's the case, does that bring Jamaican Rain into the race? Um you know, if the lead's up for grabs and it's able to find the top, you know, has got some really good figures, um, you know, at, at this sort of 14, 1500 metre distance range, which obviously the wide gate could well work into its favour. Tegan will be positive on it. So, um, you know, it's sort of one horse that I thought might be a bit over the odds. That's the tricky part there. Two horses I mentioned out of the Eagle Farm meeting that... Um, on the last video that sort of come here is Rosie Posey in a cargo. Um, I'm probably leaning to waiting for those two horses in something a little bit easier than this. Both of them will be third up next time. Um, oh, Rosie Posey's had a little bit of a couple of runs, but a cut and a little bit of time between its last run, sorry, and, and this run. So, um, you know, they were a couple that I mentioned out of that last meeting that I thought would run a right next start, but um, probably not in this grade. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought, but yeah, sort of a little bit tricky again. And um, yeah, probably the one the one that I thought was a big price was Jamaican Rain. I could definitely see it starting a hell of a lot shorter. 
Mm. Yeah, I, I think Jami Lady is a horse to beat. Uh, it'd need a fair bit of bad luck or if they don't overdo it in front. I thought Strom off the fresh and backing trip from the Port was sort of knockout odds to inform Jamaican rain. Definitely, you can forgive that that horse. Persuader wasn't on the track last start. Uh, it was around the $26 mark. And another horse that caught my eye was Skate to Paris. Uh, it's got a nice little... Uh, Nice little draw, barrier six there, Huxable on for Larry Cassidy. I think it, it might get touched by the market, skate to Paris, um, if they can settle a little bit uh, closer forward. As we sort of said, it's yeah, it's only just race here, and there's a lot of horses that uh, you know, aren't quite at their top. I'd say Jack is at its top, but apart from that, there's, um, yeah, there's big question marks over a lot of these runners. Any yeah. uh, any thoughts on, on Skate to Paris? I suppose it just gets a looks to get a few map favours there, um, like you mentioned. Um, um, yeah, look, there's a few horses there that you sort of, you've got to go, sort of go back a long way into their form to sort of find the runs that give them a chance, isn't there? So, um, mm. you know, some tricky gates as well. It, it's it is. It isn't. It's a not an easy. Not an easy. Not, these two races that we're looking at here, both at listed levels, aren't the easiest races to sort of work out. But um, one, yeah. And one thing about this um, about Ipswich, I just mentioned earlier um, about the track and how it plays. Like it, it has sort of seemed to settle down pretty well since its renovation. It seems to be racing fair. But we've seen one. We have seen a lot of small fields and a lot of you know midweek slash Sunday sort of meetings, which have been pretty low to be honest. So. Yeah, you know, this will be a real chance to see you know, how the track plays, you know, with these better quality horses engaged. Um, you know, even you've got horses like Mugtaja in this race who started uh, $4 favourite, I think, against uh, V Jammy Lady last start. Probably just gets us, probably settles a tiny bit closer here with a bit of a suck, suck a long run from gate four, which I think is what that horse needs. I think it's got a bit of a short sprint on it. So, yeah, there's plenty of angles here. Um so I'm not, yeah, not 100% convinced either way just yet. But um, Jamaican rain, I think, will start mm-hmm. shorter than current quote. Now this week you got Dolby Thursday, you got Gold Coast Saturday, Ipswich Saturday afternoon, and then Toowoomba night. How are you going to handle those meetings? And are you going to do early plays for some, or what's your yeah. what's your strategy? Um, oh. Won't be going too hard too early, Dolby. Um, Dolby had had we have had some rain up here, so the rail goes out from the six hundred to the three hundred. It's a bit of a um, wet patch or whatever they call it <laughs> um, <laughs> that uh, around that area. So the rail sort of moves. Uh, look, at, they've tossed up a heavy nine, so they'll walk the track in the morning, and if they're going to call them off, they'll do so twenty minutes before race one. <laughs> um, <laughs> So a little bit, little bit different surface out at Dolby, sticky sort of black ground out there when it gets a bit of moisture in it and it sits around a little. So we'll just go, we won't go too hard too early at Dolby. Um, probably a few plays at Rockhampton on Friday for the provincial set. Their uh, Rockhampton Cup meeting there on Friday. Um, doesn't look a bad card. Um, I've been doing that card up today. Um, so, yeah, and then we've got the Gold Coast meeting Saturday afternoon. Toowoomba Saturday night, well, um, I'll just be, um, I'll be treading warily there. I sort of went into Toowoomba with a full head of steam last week and a few, lot of early plays and we got a couple of bad beats and a couple of race, or a race in particular where we had two bets and our saver bet one and a, a good result ran second. So um, just fought, just... A little bit of a trick on these Saturday night meetings now, as I mentioned, you know, they've got the best jockeys go to, will be at Ipswich. The next level of jockeys will be going to the Gold Coast and then you've got the sort of third tier riding it to Wilmer on the Saturday night. So I've got to take that all into account um, to see sort of making sure that we're back in the right horse and jockey combos again this week where we can. So what about but- the... Uh- the first, second, and third tier callers up in Queensland. There's been some controversy about uh, Josh. What's his name? Josh Fleming and did took foul. I did read that on Twitter. Um, I was in the minority there. Like if 
I had to have I have an opinion that I think that that David Fowler is the best caller. That's my opinion based on how I like to bet or if I'm betting in the run and who I like to listen to. I like Fowler's sectional time interjections like he does with the trots. I enjoy that. A lot of people on Twitter are, hate it. Um, I don't like listening to to Josh yell two horses' names at a head and head for the last hundred. Like that's just me, personal preference. Mm. Um, I'm not sure there's any truth to it though. Um, bit of con- I, I think racing Queensland's um, relationship with Sky Channel has a lot bigger issue than who's calling uh, races on a Saturday. If I had my way, I'd get um, his Twitter handles at Wyandra Hornet, um, who call her uh, Brett Moody, who calls out at uh, Dolby and those sort of places. He's got some great sayings that he runs, you know, during the races. I'd, I'd listen to him all day. A um, uh, bit of a breeding buff and loves a jockey challenge, and he calls like it too. So it's always entertaining. Wyandra <laughs> <laughs> well, Hornet. One of his favourites is if a horse is trapped wide, he says he's the bird on the Vicky tin. I hadn't even heard that. <laughs> uh, hopefully he's calling tomorrow. Uh, at, uh, sorry, at Thursday at Dolby. So, yeah, look, I don't know. There's plenty, of, there's plenty of other dramas up here. One of the things about these race calls is the BRC, uh, Brisbane Racing Club, they actually negotiate their vision rights separately to the rest of the state. Uh, that Racing Queensland negotiate. So we could have we could effectively have Racing in Queensland, uh, Metropolitan Racing in Queensland covered by Sky and the rest of Queensland covered by Racing.com, for example. Or St- staggering. Staggering. Mm. Yes, anyway. Least of our worries. Right. Exactly. All right. Best of luck. Uh, there'll be a, a mailbag email if you haven't uh, joined up to the mailbag email on fire last week. Tipped a couple of winners out for free. So just head to mailbag.com.au to get the free best around the state. And Curls will drop his best bet in via the email in there. But at the moment, it looks like it's Jamie Lady in the Gay Waterhouse Classic. We're pretty keen on. Uh, I don't mind. Skate to Paris from an each way perspective. And in the eyeliner, your lukewarm play. Oh, excuse me. Very the hand have to have a bet. Panino. A little bit on Panino. And I think Bandipur might be uh, might be a good roughie there, but uh, I'd be betting in very, very small units across the Ipswich card, that's for sure. Girls, thanks for joining me. Uh, make sure you – what I don't know what you're going to do with that, uh, that Michael Jordan towel. I don't know what you do with it in your spare time, but uh, it looks very good. I'll be straightening it up for a start and um, I'll be putting it. Might have to get the iron out. Yeah. And I'd much rather be looking at it in, in the reflection than looking at winks anyway. <laughs> oh, as long as you get your hair cut, sort of, you'll be right. All sweet, all the fade. <laughs> See you, mate. See you, buddy. Good luck.